So here we are 24 hours later and we're going to disassemble the um, form tool. Let's have a bit of a look. So as you can see how easy that was to, to unwind, that actually had Araldite or JB Weld in the threads. So that's how impossible it is for JB Weld or any form of Araldite to stick to Delrin. So as you can see in there, the quality and the perfection of that finish. And if you look really closely on this side, that edge just here is where there was a massive chunk of carbon missing. Now we haven't filled it all the way to the very top as it's not it's not 100% necessary but you can see it's filled in that shape completely to host the bearing uh, concentrically it's not going to have any free space around it but yeah the forming of it is actually quite a nice thing let's have a look at the other side so sort of redundant to do this but I just want to try it to make sure all the measurements that we took and used for the form tool were correct, but that's a 56.8 um, mil bearing, which is what this was designed around, and it's a perfect fit. Beautiful. Okay, next step will be to make a new crown race to suit that bearing, and make sure everything's right, because what's happened by this being damaged in the first place is that the depth from the outer rim to the inside bottom of the seat, the taper, um, may not be the same and we're not sure how deep it needed to be from factory because we've got no original measurements to work with. That's why we will make a custom um, crown race to suit that to get the tolerance between the top of the fork um, and the bottom of the headset or the bottom of the head tube um, more so to be the correct distance apart and make it look factory. Yeah, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that with the camera, but it's not quite perfectly concentric but it's not too far out either. So I think at its largest dimension, it's 32.5, 32.9. Okay, so to fix that, we're gonna to need to make a fitting up it's basically 32.92. It's got to be a really snug fit over there. We want to make sure that we force and compress the um, solution down into that fitting as best as possible and not allow for too much escape.
So now we have a look at preparing this to be repaired. The process to fix this is going to be somewhat similar because we can't really take down all of that carbon to that diameter. That prevents us from taking off that material. So we're going to have to fill this area out into something that we can either then fit this to or make a new crown race for. We'll decide which way to go with that when we get there. But in the meantime, this is going to need to be prepared for bonding. And that's about as good as it needs to be. And here we are, a very simple part to do essentially a very simple job. Basically, that's just literally going to go down. And force all of that. Into a shape. We'll just get a tube to go over that to hold it all together. So to apply compression force to this, we're just going to reinstall the expander. Put a tube over the top and a top cap. give it some tension. Now it's going to be hard to get rid of all of that excess out of there because of the sharp edge. But once this comes off, we'll probably remachine the bottom part flat. But We'll wait and see what it looks like when it comes apart. And we'll show or demonstrate any follow-up processes that needs. Okay, so let's take a look at the forming of the crown race area on the fork. Got it off a little way and it looks pretty good, but I think we might need to pull it off. So that took a little bit of extra pulling, more than I expected, but as you can see, the result is very good. So that's basically going to save this fork. So now we're just going to put this thing back together and see how it works. So 
So that's the crown race that we've made. So here we are, we're going to start making the crown race. This is just a piece of scrap that I had left over from making some lock rings for some rotor cranks. So we'll just clean this up a little bit before we get into making the part. profiled that specifically to keep the, um, the height or the distance between the fork and the headset consistent. So we've made the um, the taper lock mechanism. A little bit tight by the looks of it, but let's see. When you make a bearing fitting for a headset nice and tight like that, where you can just tap it in, you actually don't need to put as much vertical preload on the bearing stack 
to keep the headset from having any play in it. But generally when companies make headsets, they're making t headsets for a margin of error quite wide. So they expect any differences to be taken up with um, just a bit of extra preload. Perfect. Hopefully the customer is super happy with that.